Hey guys, Chris here. Today we have a story from one of our viewers and he buys a property in the Ozarks of Southern Missouri. And there he spends a couple of weeks camping on it. While he's camping there, some very frightening things happen to him at night. And he has a very unique way of dealing with it. That's next. Okay, so I'm on this road in the Sierra and they are preparing for winter. So they have closed this road off. So I'm walking right down the middle of this highway next to the West Carson River. And I'm looking for a good spot to do our story from. Okay, so we're along the West Fork Carson River right here behind me. My last video, we were on the main Carson River down in the valley there. So we're way up high in the Sierra Nevada here. It's a really, it's a beautiful day. It's very warm. Hence me dropping my jacket, taking my jacket off. So, all right, so for today's beer, we have, this is very appropriate, the Leave No Trace Alpine Lager from the Great Basin Brewing Company. And that is out of Reno, Nevada. Just north of here. Oh, it's been shaking around my backpack on the hike in, so. All right, nice and golden, like that. It's a tasty beer. There we go. Yeah, very golden and Real smooth finish to it. Good aftertaste or finish, but yeah, very tasty. And uh, yeah, leave no trace. LNT, pick it up, <laughs> take it with you. It's, it's pretty funny that they have a whole can just to remind you that it's a good idea to, to pick up your stuff, so. All right, very good, cheers. Okay, so our story comes to us from one of our viewers. His name is Randall. And in 2021, just a couple years ago, he bought some property in Southern Missouri, just north of Arkansas, just outside the Mark Twain National Forest. The Mark Twain National Forest established in 1939, 1 1.5 million acres is broken up into six districts across Southern Missouri, and it's in the Ozarks. The Ozarks are heavily forested, streams, lakes, few reservoirs, and it's also known for having caves. There's over 500 caves in the Ozarks. Really interesting. And you never know what's gonna live inside of a cave. So Randall goes by the name Craypaw. He's Scottish Cajun, and he said with dyslexia, he colors outside of the box, and he said he's a really good guy to have when things go south on you things go bad. Sounds like a great guy. He was in his early 60s, August 2021. He hired a guy to bring in this storage container to put on his property and to put his equipment in and gear in while he developed his property. So we had to wait for this storage container. The guy that he hired was going to level out a spot on his property with a backhoe. He brings the backhoe in and the backhoe got a flat and they could not find a tire locally. So they had to order a tire. So he had to stay longer on this property than he wanted to. He was living in Virginia at this time. He was also during this week staying at a cabin in a campground nearby the Mark Twain National Forest and he couldn't afford it anymore. He went to a sporting goods store and bought some camping supplies, tent, sleeping bag, sleep pad, cooking supplies, and he was gonna set up his own camp on his own property while he waited this thing out to get this storage container that was gonna be delivered about a week and a half later. So the first day on the property, he decided to go to a state park called Mantuak State Park and go trout fishing. He caught some trout, he was really excited about that, 
and he picked up some lemon and some potatoes on the way back to his camp and he was going to make a nice trout dinner for himself. His camp was located in the back of his property and beyond that, about 80 feet deeper into his property, he had his little bathroom set up. He dug a little pit, had some privacy with some trees, and then he had some toilet paper on a stick that he could use to keep his bathroom away from his camp. He's walking into his campsite, towards his campsite, and he hears this owl hooting. And he's kind of curious about what kind of an owl this is. And he's thinking maybe he'll spot it, or if anything, you'll see the owl fly by. And he likes to identify animals and wildlife. He walks into his property and he can hear it, and it's beyond his camp, and he's heading towards where his bathroom is, and he can still hear it beyond that, behind this bathroom somewhere. Gets near his bathroom, he pauses, listens, and then it just stops. This is early evening, just before dark. This went on for about five days. Every night he would hear this owl, kind of in the back of his property, behind his bathroom area, and this owl would show up in the early evening and start hooting. And he welcomed it. He thought this was really cool, and he would have his campfire going and making his meals, and he would hear this owl very consistently. This next night, he's cooking his dinner as usual, got his campfire going, he's in the, near the back of his property, in his camp, he hears this owl again, but this night, something's a little different. This owl has, he described it as an angrier tone, and it was closer this time. And it was a little concerning because he knew his bathroom was back there, and he didn't feel comfortable going back there after dark. It was just unsettling for him. He also noticed that the sounds of the owl weren't high up in a tree or high up above like he expected an owl to be but they were more at ground level not on the ground but ground level five six seven eight feet high and then he thought back to the last several nights of hearing this owl and none of the nights this owl was high up in the trees they were at ground level so this next night, again, things changed. He had his campfire as usual, made his dinner. Sun's going down, it's evening, there's still some light out. He starts hearing the owl. Now he's calling it the angry owl. It's no longer just a pleasant hoo-hoo-hoo, but it's just got this angry tone at the end to it. But this time, he's hearing wildlife walking around the forest behind his camp. It sounds like it's between his camp and his bathroom this time. And interesting, it's almost corresponding with this owl sound. He's really concerned about this, and he also notices that the crickets, frogs, whippoorwill, anything that's a night sound, suddenly stops. And he always remembered whenever the night sounds, crickets and frogs would stop, there was a predator around. So Randall knows he's only got just a few more nights to wait until this storage container shows up on Friday. It's Wednesday night. He has a shotgun. He has ready if he needs it. And it gives him some extra safety. And he's in his tent and he feels very vulnerable because he just knows he's just got this thin wall tent with a sc you know, screen door between him and whatever's outside. So on Wednesday night, makes his campfire, has his dinner. This time, right before sundown, he hears the owl, the angry owl. But this time, the owl, after the owl's sound, is followed by this low growl. Really scary. And also, he's hearing this wildlife in the forest, but now he can hear clearly that it's footsteps, heavy, loud footsteps in the forest behind his tent. He's really stressed out about this. He takes his flashlight, it's got a good spotlight, and he's shining it in the forest, looking for whatever or whoever is out there. Doesn't see anything, and he's thinking, there's gotta be a person maybe messing with him. 
He's really not sure what to think, but he just couldn't imagine what this could be. Randall told me that he's got a friend that was in the military, former veteran, and he was a trained sniper. And this guy could hide in the forest, and he played a little game with Randall occasionally when they were together camping, and he could stand in the forest and Randall couldn't see him. And he, he would whistle and then he would, Randall would look and then he would smile and then Randall would see where he was. But he could stay hidden, just standing there and almost disappear in the forest. So while Randall was shining his spotlight into the forest, he yelled out, this is my property. I'm the owner here. I will prosecute any trespassers. He really believed there was possibly somebody out there messing around with him. It got really quiet. He saw or heard nothing else. And then the sounds of the forest came back. He also remembered that the guy that was delivering the storage container who lived in the area, he reminded him to make sure that you secure your food, any canned goods, dry goods, put them in your car at night, and hang any other food, meat, whatever, in a tree, and so he hung his food between two trees to secure his food. He had his shotgun, and he was like doing everything he could to get through this. And he was thinking, thank goodness I only got just a couple more nights to get through to wrap this thing up so I can head back to Virginia. So that Thursday morning, Randall knew he only had one more night to go before his storage container would show up. He decided to take his cell phone, he got some reception, and he wanted to look up Bigfoot with animal sounds. Much to his concern, he found other people that had experiences, encounters with Sasquatch while the Sasquatch was mimicking wildlife, birds, and sometimes even owls. Randall still thought this could be a person. Thursday night, he's at his camp. He's got the fire going. He's been having the fire going 24-7 is what he said. Meaning that in the afternoon he'd let the fire die down, but it'd still be a bed of coals. He could put some kindling on it, firewood, and stoke it right back up for the evening. Interesting, just before dinner, the sun was going down. He didn't hear the owl sound. He had his dinner, and then after dark, he heard this owl sound again. Angry owl. But it was angrier this time than he'd ever heard before. And he heard these walking in the forest, this loud walking in the forest. And it was coming right for his camp. Straight for his camp. And it's pitch black out. So he grabbed his shotgun and he yelled out while he was shining the spotlight into the forest, I am armed and I will shoot unless you identify yourself. And God knows I don't want to shoot anybody, let alone a friend or a neighbor. He shined and he didn't see anything, but he could still hear this loud movement in the forest, this almost crashing sound with this owl growl sound coming towards him. Like it was just out there beyond his spotlight. This feeling of fear and dread was starting to overtake him and he was just trembling. And he was thinking, I gotta make a decision in just a matter of seconds here as to what I gotta do. And he was thinking, I don't wanna shoot anybody, but if I have to, I will. But then he had this thought, what if this really was a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch? And if he shoots it, he's just gonna make it angry. He's gonna make the situation even worse. And he also knows if it was really a predator that wanted to kill him, it would wait up until the moment of attack before it would make any noise. It would be silent. And this thing was revealing itself every single night, like letting him know it was out there. And he felt like, almost like it was testing him to see what he would do, fight or flight, right? Be defensive, hurt, angry, scared, but fighting or flee and run and get out of there and he was just like he felt like he was being tested and then he had this thought like what if I did the opposite of what this thing maybe wanted me to do and I kind of held my ground and I was confident he remembered he had talked to it 
thinking he was talking to a person and it got quiet. So he thought, what if I did that? But I did even beyond that. And he started singing of all things. And he was trying to feel confident and loud enough and sure of himself. And he sang, dream a little dream. And whatever this thing was, it stopped. It was working. This not running and fleeing or shooting the shotgun seemed to be working. So he sang another song. He sang Rocky Raccoon, a Beatles song. <laughs> and he's just singing top of his lungs as confident and loudly as he could. It sounded like it was listening to him because he didn't hear it retreat. He didn't hear it coming forward anymore. And he sang Don't Pass Me By by the Beatles, another Beatles song. <laughs> and, he, and he thought, you can't do this all night. So he thought, I'm going to talk to this thing as if it could understand me, knowing that most likely it can't. But just in your tone and your attitude and how you present yourself, you have a certain vibration, like a vibe about you. So he started talking to it. And this is what he said. I'm just going to read it. He said, I know if you are the hairy man of the woods, you could crush me like a bug. Even so, I will do my best knowing you will bleed too and make you bleed and get my pound of flesh. But I wish you no harm and we can live together in peace and I'll leave food and plant food, which you are welcome to share when you need and we can live together in peace. Now I'm gonna make my dinner and get some rest and leave in a few days but I will return another time and stay within my area and not go further where you live. And then he paused and he listened and it all was quiet. And the sound of the forest came back. Wow. <laughs> he made his dinner, heard no other sounds, went to sleep, slept really well, didn't have any issues that night. The next morning, the guy brought the storage container. He put some things into it. That evening, the angry owl sounds and all this noise and this walking in the forest never happened. And he had a nice night. So interesting, about 3.45 a.m., he hears something and it's not in the direction where he'd been hearing these sounds the last several nights, but it was in the direction of where he needed to go to leave. He hears this loud tree knock. So loud, it sounded like somebody had just hit a home run, but louder is what he said. Right away, startled, he sits up and he's listening to this and he hears it three times with about 10 second interval between each time. He texts his family and he tells them what's going on. And they say, well, try to get some recordings of it. And he got the phone ready and he, it stopped. He couldn't get anything. He decided he couldn't sleep. He wanted to get out of there. He was like, okay, I am done. We got the storage container. I'm gonna get out of here. So he leaves. So fast forward to today. And he says he still hears them occasionally and sometimes they'll even throw rocks. And he didn't explain what that was like, but you can imagine he's out working on something and a rock will go flying overhead. But he's got comfortable with it and he loves his property, he's living on it and he feels comfortable and he feels like they got their area and he's got his space. And he said, I just think weird things happen in the forest and people just need to know that they're not the only ones and that they're not alone. He just wanted to say that. And that was one of his motivations to send me his story. So thank you, Randall. Appreciate you sending your story, or Craypaw, as he likes to be called. So, all right, that is our story for today. And I'm really grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for a lot of things. I really appreciate you guys and your comments and everything else. So you guys have a great weekend. And if you guys like stories about the strange, unexplained things that go bump in the light, please like and subscribe. Also, if you have your own story, I'll take a look at it, maybe even have it on the show. And that can be sent to basecampchris2 at gmail.com. And we'll see you next time. Keep hiking.